Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Dubai's $1.25 billion bond four times oversubscribed. MR Properties successfully places up to $500 million in convertible notes. And we find out why local companies pay a higher price for international consultants. The GCC markets ended in negative territory today. There were similar results at the UAE bourses. The Asian markets had a mixed run this Thursday. The DFM fell over 1% to close at 1,683 points. MR Properties dropped nearly 2%, while Arab Tech was down half a percent. Drake & Skull International also lost half a percent. The contracting company announced that it has signed a letter of intent for the acquisition of a Saudi MEP company. Do fell half a percent. 147 million shares were traded, valued at 330 million dirhams. And in the capital, the ADX fell a quarter of a percent to close at 2,673 points. Shares at Etisalat were down half a percent. The telecom provider has submitted a preliminary conditional offer to buy a 46% stake in Kuwaiti mobile company Zane for 1.70 Kuwaiti dinars per share, valuing the stake at over $10 billion. The real estate sector fell today. Aldar Properties was down 2%, while shares at Suru, lost, Suru Real Estate lost 1.25%. 43 million shares were traded, valued at 107 million dirhams. For a further analysis of the markets, we're now joined by financial analyst Bruce Powers. Bruce, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, the DFM has been touching the 1,700 mark of late. Well, earlier in the week, we hit a resistance level and recent high. And we've since uh, chopped around a little bit around the 1700 level. Now, this is not unusual after a strong rally. We should see additional consolidation over the next week or two. Um, if we look at the, uh, the index, we see that it's still sitting above the 200 period moving average, which is a very bullish sign. And that level should now provide a support area for the index. Now, if we look at Abu Dhabi, that could, should also see a period of consolidation as well in the near future. Right, because there's also been a market movement in the telecom sector with Etisalat looking to see quite a large market, ma market share of um, Q80 company Zane. Tell us about that. Well, the investors see that as a good fit for Etisalat in regards to their international expansion efforts. Now, this is a preliminary and conditional offer. So we don't know what the conditions are. So there's still other information that needs to come out. And we don't have a deal yet, so there's still a ways to go. Now, the second largest shareholder in Zane uh, has already come out and, and supported the deal. So this is a positive. I think it's also a positive for the region as a whole as it brings additional positive news uh, into the world, uh, awareness. And hopefully, uh, in particular, it gets awareness and, and additional interest from institutional uh, international investors. So we've still got to wait a little bit more time on that one then? I think so, yes. Well, thanks so much for joining us again. Nice to see you again, Bruce. Thank you. Dubai's $1.25 billion bond issue was four times oversubscribed. Government officials say the bond had successful pricing, demonstrating increased investor confidence in the strong long-term value proposition of the Emirate of Dubai. The dual trans bond will be offered under the Dubai government's Euro Medium Term Note program, which was established in April 2008. The first $500 million tranche, which matures in five years, carries a yield of 6.7%, while the second $750 million tranche matures in 10 years and yields 7.75%. Meanwhile, MR Properties has successfully placed $450 million of convertible notes due in 2015. The property developer says the offering was heavily oversubscribed and total demand generated exceeding $3 billion. The bond will pay an annual interest rate of 7.5% and will be listed on the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. The company says the issue was upsized from $375 million due to strong investor demand and has an option to subscribe for up to an, an additional 50 million. 
The IMF warns of danger of over-reliance on credit rating agencies for sovereign debtors after investigating Fitch, Moody's and Standard Poor's. The international body believes regulators have accidentally spread financial instability by forcing investors to react instantly to downgrades in sovereign credit ratings. Recommendations include the need for rating agencies to specify what prob probability they ascribe to sovereign debt default, rather than simply ranking governments in order of credit worthiness. Meanwhile, rating agencies say financial institutions and investors should use their ratings in moderation, combined with other financial tools. Well, actually, the, uh, the report also concluded that the IMF thought ratings are a good thing. Um, but the main conclusion is also that you know, they don't want to have an over-reliance on ratings. And I think we support you know, part of those uh, conclusions in that if regulators want to use ratings, that's fine. Uh, but they should also use other benchmarks or measures um, for banks to use because if you just want to give investors uh, mandatory ratings, then we think that's probably not such a good thing to do. The GCC markets ended lower today. Let's check in on those numbers now, starting off with the UAE general indexes. Coming up now, let's take a look at the major international currencies against the dirham, followed by the price of oil and the precious metals. After the break, we look at how local companies can cut costs while hiring consulting firms. <laughs> 